This is my new trailer hitch that I ordered for my 2001 Ford Focus. You can see it's made in USA by Sequent Performance Products. Um, 2,000 pound maximum tra trailer weight and 200 pound maximum tongue weight. Now I'm going to use it primarily just to put a bike rack on. I just don't have room for a bike in my car. So this is how it ships. You can see they don't they don't ship it in a box. So um, I'm going to touch up a lot of the paint's been scraped off by UPS, so I'm just going to touch that up with some some Rust-Oleum and then put it on the car. Here's what it looks like out of the box. Now this cost me $114, including shipping, and I bought it on eBay. So I imagine one for a big truck would be a little more expensive because it would be heavier. Also, this one they claim that you don't have to drill any holes in your car to use it, so all of the holes in it in the mounting brackets here align up to holes that are already in my car so that makes it a lot easier to just just get under there and bolt it on all right let's have a look under the car so the car has these things called tie down hooks i'm right under the rear bumper here and so the there's i'm going to put two plates on either side of this and then bolts through there to hold the hitch on that's on the muffler side and then on the other side there's another set of tie down hooks here that uh, you'll put the bolts through to hold the trailer hitch on and then there's one bolt up there all right so the concept is carriage bolts with uh, big square washer thingies to keep them from spinning on the other side here's a look at the schematic and then depending on whether you have a sedan or a hatchback there's there's one piece that goes here on the sedan and goes here on the hatchback so I've got the side bolts assembled loosely. Now we're looking at the top one. You can see, doesn't they line up exactly with the hole? No matter how I wiggle it around, it's not gonna, it's not gonna line up exactly. Um, you never know who to blame in these situations because it's, it, you know, there's probably some variation in the the way that they install the tie down hooks. So you can't really say that the trailer hitch guys got it wrong or that Ford got it wrong. So I imagine whenever you put one of these in, it's, it's going to have to tune it a little bit. And get it to fit in there. With the, I've, I've put the bolts on loosely so that I can shift, you know, shift, shift the hitch around and move it. And I still haven't been able to get a clear shot at the hole. All right. So now, what I've done is I've hooked up a crescent wrench to this tab, and then I pushed on it with my foot as hard as I could to bend the, uh, to bend the trailer hitch bracket. I just didn't want to take it off the car again. That would be kind of a pain. So now you can see the hole is lined up perfectly. So this, even as thick as this steel is, you can bend it with your foot and a crescent wrench should you need to. So now I'm just going to feed that bolt through there, tighten up the other ones, and we're good to go. All right, I'm going to use some electrical wire and then duct tape it onto the bolt. So I just feed it up through this hole. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. And then it's going to come out over here. All right, and this operation, duct tape is your friend. So we'll be able to shove the bolt and the um, whatever the hell you call this thing up in there. And we want the bolt to stay in the washer. So I'm going to duct tape it in there from the back side. Won't hurt anything if there's duct tape up inside there for forever. I just don't want to get any duct tape on the bottom side here because that needs to be up against the car. So once that's duct taped into place, then we use a little more duct tape on the wire coming out from under the bumper and just duct tape this to the threads. Now this is a wire, so I'm going to wrap the wire around the threads a little bit just so it gets a little better grip, kind of spread it out, get it into the threads here and then put some duct tape over it. That way it's got the duct tape to hold it on and it also has the wires riding in the grooves of the threads to keep it in place. And it doesn't make it too much fatter than the bolt itself. So the bolt will still fit through the hole. That shouldn't, uh, that should stay on there until I take it off. So that's, that's your operation. Then you just twist it sideways and shove it up the hole and pull it through and let's see if that works. All right, so pulling, pulling. No, we're gonna. Sorry, I could use a cameraman sometimes. Push, put the bolt and washer up into the hole. And just pull, pull it through. Oh yeah, done. That was the easiest thing in the world. So that is the uh, wire pulling method.
of getting a bolt through a hole that you can't get to the back of. All right, so that's what it'll look like when you're done. There's a special concave washer that they give me that's got, um, it's got little spikes on the end of it and it's concave, so that washer goes here. And then there's also a spacer that was supposed to go in here that I didn't mention before that I just put in there to fill in this little gap. You can see how there's a dip in the frame rail. And then uh, just torque it down here, here, and over there, and your trailer hitch is done. One last quick look on the passenger side. We've got a washer, bolt nut. Uh, we've got this one coming in from the top that we use the wire feed method for. And then on the uh, and on this side, you just use this uh, square plate to hold the carriage bolt in place. And then on the driver's side, net bolt washer on this side in two spots. And then over here, there's a spacer in between. Now, if you were, if you had the hatchback, you'd put it on the passenger side, but on the sedan, it's on the driver's side. There's a spacer that goes in between here, and then there's a couple of uh, square and rectangular carriage bolt holders that keep the carriage bolts from spinning when you tighten them down. And that's that. That's what it looks like on the car. It's kind of hard to see in this light, but uh, pretty well hidden. Now the next test is to see if it scrapes on the driveway. Probably won't. It's about the same height as the exhaust pipe uh, coming out.